Right. Good morning, everyone. Uh, good to see you all. Uh, let's begin this time with a word of prayer. Uh, Prabhakar Rao, uh, is it okay if you can lead us in prayer, please? Oh, sure, Pastor. Thank you. Dear Heavenly Father, we praise you, acknowledge your holy name. At this moment, we come unto your throne of grace, Father. Thank you for this wonderful opportunity and a learning experience, Father. I dedicate this class and our whole students and Pastor Paul as well, Father. Lead us all into your way. Teach us, guide us, Father. Give us that intellect to understand the insights of your words, Father, so that we can prepare ourselves to be uh, your kingdom builders, Father. Thank you, Father. Each and every minute of this class should be blessed and wonderfully executed. And I ask this prayer in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you, Prabhakar. All right. So uh, yesterday we completed chapter 16. We looked at challenges and tough times. Right. And I'm sure that all of us, uh, no matter what challenge or tough times that we go through, uh, the Bible teaches us that every mountain can be conquered every challenge, every difficult season, uh, be assured that God is with us. He will take us through, right? And we looked at so many wonderful uh, you know, passages. We looked at so many wonderful verses. And I want to encourage you to uh, probably, if you maintain a notebook or if you have your Bibles as well, make note of these uh, verses because these will really help uh, you know, along the way as you are uh, in the workplace or in the ministry there will be tough times, uh, uh, even family, right? Uh, uh, family life, there will be tough times, there will be challenges. Um, and these are verses, the scriptures that can help us to overcome those seasons of challenges and tough times. So uh, do make a note of them, write them down, meditate on them. Uh, and I'm sure it's gonna help you and bless you uh, as you continue in God's will. All right, we'll get into chapter 17, which is stewardship. Now, uh, uh, we have heard the Lord Jesus also talk about stewardship in, in many places. He used a lot of parables talking about stewardship. And the Bible has a lot of principles uh, uh, relevant to stewardship. Now, what is stewardship? Uh, you know, we've heard the Bible, uh, you know, in, in the Bible, we see that Jesus says, you are a good steward, or he was a bad steward. So what is what is stewardship? Stewardship is basically taking care of something that has been put into our hands, right? Uh, or a responsibility uh, to manage whatever God has given us, to manage it effectively, to use it wisely, to multiply it, or and to you know, pass it on to succeeding generations. Now, all of us in our life will be stewards to something or the other, right? Example, if we have children, we need to be good stewards. We need to be good parents. We need to teach our children, uh, you know, the right ways. Proverbs uh, uh, Proverbs 22, 15 says, uh, train up a child the way he should go. Uh, so that when he grows old, he shall not depart from it. Being good stewards is a very important responsibility that God is giving us. You know, God blesses us with many things in our lives, right? But how well are we using what God blesses us with? And that is called stewardship, right? It could be our children. It could be a family. It could be finances. It could be our workplace, uh, the material things that God blesses us with everything uh, uh, we must be good stewards of it right so let's look at scriptural principles relevant to stewardship right uh, so i'm on chapter 17 stewardship let's look at a few points here first one honor god with your personal finances let's read proverbs chapter 3 verse 9 and 10 proverbs 3 9 and 10 Yes, any one of us can read. Verse 3, 9 and 10. Uh, honor the Lord your possessions, and with the first fruits of all your increase, so your barns will be full with, filled, with, filled with plenty, and your vats 
will overflow with new wine. Amen. Thank you, Christopher. Now we also read uh, First Chronicles. In First Chronicles, uh, we see that he's he writes First Chronicles twenty nine. God, you are great. You are glorious. You are splendid. You are majestic. Everything in heaven is and earth is yours. You are king. You are ruler of all. All riches and wealth come from you. Uh, this is a very common verse that we all say. Uh, you rule everything by your strength and power. You are able to make everyone, anyone, great and strong. Now, God, we give thanks and we praise your glorious name. Uh, yet my people and I cannot really give you anything because everything is a gift from you. And we have all only given back what is already yours. This is such a powerful verse. One of the most important principles that we must live by and understand is that God owns everything in this world. Right? God owns it, everything. When we have this in our mind, when that's our mindset, so for example, God blesses us, right? He blesses us probably with a house or a car or any material blessing. Everything belongs to God. Yes, God has taught us, God has blessed us, He has given us, He blesses the work of our hands. We work hard, He blesses us. But we must remember that everything belongs to God. Sometimes we can come to a place by saying, okay, you know, five years before I was nothing. And then, you know, I picked up myself, I worked hard and now I'm here and uh, it's my hard work. Yes, there's a hard work. But who gave you that life? Who gave you that strength? Who gave you the ability to work that hard? It was God. The wealth we have, the possessions we have, everything belongs to God. And it's very important to know that, okay, God has given us, so we must give back to God. Right? Now, it's very, uh, you know, it's very easy to receive, right? God, I receive, I receive. It's wonderful. God blesses us. We take it with open hands. But what about when we give? When we give to God, we honor him and we recognize his ownership on everything. And giving back, like, you know, when we give tithe, when we give our offerings, when we give to the poor, to the needy, it's like honoring God. We're saying, God, whatever you've given me, I'm giving back to you. It's not that I'm setting aside and saying, okay, oh, no, I have to give tithe. Can I give next month or can I give, you know, uh, do I have to do this this month? Is it okay, God, if I give you? It's not about all of that. You know, God is not uh, a, a hard taskmaster. He says, oh, you didn't give tight this month, so nothing is going to come your way. No. We give to God because we recognize that he has given us. Right? And... Whatever we have, when we give, we, we, we are honoring him and saying, God, this is all yours. And when we do that, we are being good stewards. Right? Uh, you know, many people have asked me, what about, you know, uh, we have students in our church and, you know, they do all these internships and uh, a lot of medical students. So they do internships and they get paid a certain amount. Uh, and so some of the students came and asked me, it, it's like a stipend, right? They get every month. And so the students came and asked me, uh, should we be tithing with this? And uh, my response was, uh, is, it, is it something that God has blessed you with? They said, yes. So don't you want to honor God with what God has blessed you with? I said, yes. So give to God. right? Uh, and sometimes it's very hard. Uh, you know, in some seasons we feel, oh, uh, you know, we make a budget. We say, okay, this, 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 this. Uh, but here's the thing. When we put God as first priority, he will make sure that every need of us is met. Yes, go ahead, Shri Kumar. Yeah, thank you, Pastor. Pastor, I just want to know, um, is it okay using in, in case uh, if there is a financial a uh, problem and uh, in case like because this is a commitment but uh, as we learn that it is honoring god and uh, is it okay using credit card and uh, even though we don't have money 
but is it okay that uh, we can use the credit card and we can uh, give the tithe offering or whatever God puts in our card? Is it okay? Thank okay. You. Right. That's a very good question, Sri Kumar. Now, uh, credit card is something that, you know, it, it's available, right? There's nothing wrong in having a credit card, right? Uh, there's nothing wrong in having a credit card. Now, it is how we use it. We must use it responsibly. So imagine I, I, I you know, uh, I'll answer your question, but I just want to bring context. So uh, imagine I take a credit card, right? I know, okay, this is my budget for a month. So for example, 10,000 a month is what I can, you know, use the credit card for. And then only if it's 10,000 a month, I can make payments for it. Right? This is an example. Now, what if I go ahead and use it every now and then just to meet, uh, you know, just to, for the luxuries and, and I keep swiping my credit card and then all of a sudden I realize, Hey, I'm in debt. Right now, what has happened? The credit card is not wrong. That's just a card, right? We were wrong in using the credit card, right? Uh, it, it, right. So I hope you get what I'm saying. So, uh, it's not like you have a credit card. It's a sin. No, it's not a sin. It's how we use it, right? Uh, whether we use it the right way, and that's important. So to answer your question, if you, uh, you know, uh, even now at the time, time and age that we are in, if you are using a credit card on a regular basis, you can. There's nothing wrong in paying your tithes through credit card. But don't make it in a way. Now, don't use that as an option to say, okay, I'll keep swiping. I'll keep using my credit card every month paying tithe. And then know, and knowing that, okay, I'm not able to pay this back. Uh, or, or, you know, I, I, you know that, okay, this is a, this is a difficult, you know, I can't pay this back if I keep using my credit card. Then I'm not being a good steward. I can't say, okay, God, I paid the, all the tithe through my credit card. So please help me clear my credit card debt. Now we must be responsible, right? Uh, God has given us a mind. Uh, so we must plan out. We must think, okay, this month, okay, I, uh, you know, due to some restrictions, I'll use my credit card, but next month I will, you know, try and um, get the cash flow and try to make the payments for that. And then make sure that, you know, I don't go over the budget or my credit card. So to answer your question, Shritwa, yes, it's all right to pay your tithes through credit card. Uh, but only make sure that you know you you be good stewards of the credit card because uh, now there are a lot of folks that uh, who I have met where they've you know just probably got a new job and you know you know in our nation we immediately you get a job a couple of months later you have the credit card companies calling you saying why don't you apply so we need to be wise right uh, uh, not just saying okay I got a job so I can just do whatever I want so. Um, I hope that answers your question, Shri Kumar. Yes, Pastor. Yeah, all right. Yes, Christopher, go ahead. Uh, no, I just wanted to, I guess, give my uh, my sort of uh, view on this. Uh, my understanding is that the credit card is really uh, just a convenient way of you know being able to yeah. you know, spend money, yeah. and uh, it is it is um, it has to be paid in full actually uh, you know by, you know in a, in a month's time. Uh, so I, I personally think that, you know, you know, a tithe, um, we tithe from what we receive from God, and uh, it's. I don't think the credit card itself is 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 what we are receiving from God. I think what, what I would think is that you know, if I get X amount, uh, you know, in 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 income, uh, out of that, I I would you know tithe. Yeah. Um, using the credit card and saying that you know it is actually income um is i don't i personally think this not is not the right way to go about it yeah uh, we, we get we 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 base it on what what is, what is the income that we receive and uh credit card transactions are uh, actually uh, just a convenient way and some which are sometimes it's like a trap uh you know uh you know yeah. to, uh, not in particularly when you don't pay the pay the full amount uh, uh, you know, in a month's time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um, thank you, Christopher, for sharing your thoughts. So, what uh, I think the question that Shri Kumar posed was, if his, you know, if he gets a certain income, 
uh, is it okay to pay one tenth of that income through credit card? So that was his question. Uh, I, I hope that was your question, Sri Kumar. Uh, yeah, that that is the, also there. But there is a scripture where the Bible says in the Second Corinthians that they they supported the ministry beyond their ability. Mm. So I just want to know that in today's case, mm. uh, when I am in the ministry, maybe I don't have a regular income. Mm. But I have a heart to uh, to support the church. But I am paying my credit card on time. Somehow mm. God is making that. Uh, but uh, whenever I feel that there is a need in the kingdom, mm. uh, is it okay that because that is a need for the kingdom, and when I feel that, yes, uh, yes, I know that it's not. It's something beyond my ability. Mm. But this is something which we have to do because this is a mission of God. Mm. So in that way, is it okay for honoring God, believing that yes, I can use this, and God will. Um, yes, I'm careful in using credit card. So uh, very careful. <laughs> I yeah. only one credit card. Yeah. Uh, so, so that's yeah. So Thank you. Yes, Shri Kumar. So, uh, so uh, like I will, what Christopher was saying also is also true because see, he was saying that you know you can't just use a credit card and say okay uh, if it's from your tight right if it's something that okay this is your salary i'm paying the tithe and i'm paying it through credit card i i believe this is my opinion right i believe it's all right uh but as you said if you're not getting a regular income now that will go into offerings right something like a, an additional very true, uh, very true, very true. Uh, offering yes. uh, yes. it's not that one tenth that you get every month so that will go into yes. offerings uh, uh now yeah as christopher said you know you you gotta be wise right you can't just be you know, spending it and, uh, you know, you have to pay the whole thing back. So we know that, you know, people are in need. Uh, so, uh, you know, it's, it's, it really needs, uh, I, I believe that, you know, if, if it's something that, you know, God is pressing you towards and you feel that you have to do this and you feel that God is going to, you know, come through for you, uh, you know, uh, I would say go ahead, but then, uh, you know, be wise because you need to, you know, nobody's going to come and make the payment for you. You have to make the payment back to the card. So uh, you can't say that, okay, I had to do this because this missionary or this mission was going to, you know, just break down if I didn't pay it. No, God has his ways. Yes, God can impress on our hearts also to, uh, uh, you know, to help others, but we need to be wise, right? Um but but to answer the question of paying your salary, the one tenth of your salary by credit card, I believe it's okay. Uh, but anything additional to that, or offerings and all of it, think about it, right? Whether it's really necessary to use a credit card because you know there's, you know, uh, interest to be paid and there's there are things that, you know, uh, you don't want to pile up on your credit card. So just be wise, right? Uh, uh, I hope that uh, answers your question. Thank you, Christopher, for sharing your thoughts. Thanks, Thanks. Uh, in terms of stewardship, Kennedy's put it, uh, in terms of stewardship, is is an order to finance a political party? Um, uh, Kennedy, uh, is it okay if you can unmute and ask a question? Um, is it... Um, uh, is is what you're asking? Is it okay to finance a political party? Is that is that okay? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, is, it, is it in order to contribute or finance a political party in terms of stewardship? Um. Okay. Uh, a political party. Now, uh, you know, we know that God has uh, placed in, uh, you know, have set in place that we must give. Uh, but when we must also give to, uh, you know, most importantly, when the scripture teaches us, give to the poor, give to the needy, give to the widows, um, doesn't really teach us, you know, uh, on, you know, uh, giving to any political, uh, like kind of uh, uh, government body as such. Uh, but once again, uh, Kendi, see, these are personal things. These are personal uh, priorities. Now, if I say no, uh, it, it shouldn't be like, okay, you know, uh, so, you know, I should not give. Or if I say yes, it shouldn't be like, I sh you have to give, right? So it's all a personal priority. If the Lord is leading you towards it, go ahead. But make sure that you're, you know, whatever you're, sh you're contributing is contributed to a good cause, right? Uh, so if there's a political party that is, you know, helping out children and widows, give to them but if you know that there's a political party that is you know financing um uh, or helping you know build uh, uh you know 
uh, other faiths, people of other faiths, uh, or you know, helping these other faiths, you would try to avoid it because you want to bless your own uh, people, right? So, uh, again, just being wise is very important, Kennedy. Uh, I hope that answers your question. Thank you. Thank. Thank. Yeah. All right. Yes. Yeah, so, as we learnt. Um, Honor God with your personal finances. Okay, Prabhakar Rao, uh, many people feel it's better to use tithe or uplift for upliftment of poor widows rather than give it to ministry. Um, no, uh, now, uh, Prabhakar, I want to be careful in this, right? So, one tenth of our income goes to the church, to the ministry, to God, right? And the other things, right, like of, for the poor, for the needy, that becomes an additional thing that you, know, you are doing, right? But God has instructed us to give one-tenth to the church, to the ministry, just like how, now remember, you know, the ministry may be well off and doing all, you know, has enough income. Sometimes I had this question, right? Oh, why should I give to a ministry when they already have so much and they are, you know, uh, blessing others? Uh, why don't I give to the poor, to the needy? Now, here's the thing. God has an order, right? Remember that when we are giving, we are not giving to the ministry, right? When we're giving one-tenth, the one-tenth is not giving it to the ministry. We're giving it to God. We're honoring God, right? Uh, but also, but there's another aspect. We, God has instructed that, you know, this whole order there's order and there's there's church that is um, you know something that we must do is one tenth give it to our local church wherever god has placed us whether they are 100 people whether they are 10000 people give to the church and then apart from that what we do is offerings and contributions those are additional blessings um, that we can you know give to the poor and the upliftment of uh, widows and all of that. So, uh, Prabhakar, I hope that is okay. Yeah, yes, Pastor. Um, that, that's well do with my question. Uh, because I just asked this question uh, because we do follow this, uh, you know, in our churches and we preach about it. We give the tithe to the God because it is God's, uh, for God's ministry purpose. But some of the like people uh, who are like, wants to use it in such a way many pastors in you know nowadays in youtube and what uh, facebook and all that they are preaching don't give it to ministries and don't give rather utilize it for you know uh, they're, they're dragging people into the false teachings and those people come up with that reference like oh, that youtube uh, link that that pastor is saying something else he's also a pastor and why you are you know misquoting it or something like that so in that context pastor i'm asking so how to deal with that uh, yeah, yeah. So, Prabhakar, see, uh, there will be a lot of, you know, erroneous teachings. Which, uh, but we must do what the Bible teaches us, and the Bible teaches us, one tenth of our income goes to the Lord, right? So uh, that cannot be changed. So, a lot of teachings will come. There'll be teachings like you know, even now there are there are there are not only in uh, you know finances, but in in ministry as a whole. Uh, when you look at the global church, there are there are so many teachings that are not in line with the scriptures, right? Uh, so we must be careful. Of course, YouTube is YouTube. Uh, social media is a platform where everyone have their uh, opportunity to you know express their opinions. But we must be careful, right? Um, um, uh, you know, there's there's there are some wonderful teachers, but there are times when you know, somewhere the, the the teaching has gone astray. Right, but our responsibility is what does the Bible teach us? Test everything through the word of prophecy, through the word of God. Test it, right? Uh, and and then we will know. Okay, what does the Bible say? Now, this person or this pastor or this preacher is saying this, but what does the Bible say? Right? Uh, even now, there are people who don't believe in the rapture. They don't believe in it. Wonderful men of God, wonderful men of God, wonderful ministries, but they don't believe in the rapture. Now, just because it's a wonderful ministry doing very well, world famous, does not mean that the rapture is not going to happen, right? Uh, what does the Bible teach us? The Bible teaches us that there will be a rapture, right? So 
we must be careful on what we watch online. Uh, you know, whatever we watch, test it with the word of God. So that would be a good thing to do. Right. Uh, yes. Abhinas has raised his hand. Yeah, thank you, Pastor. Um, actually, my question is, Pastor, what if uh, I'm going to the church, but uh, I'm giving, we are giving tithes and the offering, but the, when it comes to the transparent, they don't want to say it and say that, like, where money is going, what they are doing, and it's like li little suspense, and they are making suspense, and, and it's to the congregation, it's little uh, concern about the money and the church. So, what if Pastor, like, what if uh, how to do either we should give or not so that's my question yeah so avinas uh, what we studied last class will make perfect sense here because see uh god is our boss right god is our leader god is the one who has given us right so when we are giving we're giving it to god now you be assured that you are a good steward of your income Right. You say, God, I don't know what is happening here. There's no transparency or whatever that is what's happening. But as you have planted me in this place, I am giving one tent to this to where you have planted me. Now, once it's given, your responsibility is over. Right now is the responsibility of the pastors and the leaders because they will be held accountable before God. Right. So, yes, there will be times that you would want to know, but there are times you can't know. Right. Not every time are they, you know, uh, transparent. Not all ministries are transparent. They don't want everyone to know. But you as uh, as a member of that church, you're doing your part of giving one tenth to the church. What they do with that money or that uh, whatever tithe has given, they will be held accountable before God. Right. And so remember last class, we talked about how, um, you know, uh, uh, when we do our work sincerely, the Lord will reward us. Right. Uh, focus on the Lord and expect God to intervene. So when we give to God out of a cheerful heart, saying, God, I'm giving to the ministry. Now, what the ministry does with this, that the leaders, the pastors are accountable before God. But God will bless you because you have done your part. Right? There will be times you would want to know. Maybe there's no transparency. But what you can do is you, you be assured. Okay, I'm obedient to what God is telling me to do. That is to give unto the Lord. Right? Uh, uh, so yeah. as I said, uh, the, we can't know everything that the ministry is doing. Uh, you know, one of the things that we do at APC intentionally is we have everything up uh, on the website we have everything on uh, wire transfer right so everything even a coffee payment monthly coffee payment we have it on on wire transfer so everything is documented right uh, and the church also can ask for details they can just download it and uh, check all the details what was the offerings that came everything is available and freely accessible so uh, not all ministries work that way uh, but be assured that you know you're giving unto god and god will bless you so uh, rupa i'll just get to you there's a question from uh, prabhakar here uh, what if a person has prayed to sow the entire first month salary but when he does he's going to be suffering for his daily needs so in that case what should he do, please? Okay. Um, Prabhakar, it's simple. Now, God has made us good steward. Made us, God has given us a responsibility, right? Now, God has also given us wisdom. Now, for example, right? I'm just using this example. Uh, I am married. I have a child. And for example, I get 20,000 rupees a month. Now, if I put the whole 20,000 rupees into tithe, it may sound very nice, right? I would love to do it. But what about my needs? What about my monthly needs? Right? What about uh, you know looking after my family? What about looking after my child? What about food for them? It doesn't make sense if I'm putting the whole salary into God's kingdom. Right? It sounds nice. I say, oh wow, I've given everything to God. 
And then I sit and pray and say, God, please provide for me. God is going to say, I provided for you. Uh, all you needed to do is be a good steward of it. Plan it out well. Right? Yes, there will be times God can ask, you know, put in your heart to give extra right, to God's kingdom. So there was there was a season um, in 2019. But we, we as a family just felt, okay, God placed in our hearts, we must sow into uh, the building fund. So we said, okay, let's just sow. That is something extra. But we also made sure that, okay, you know, I had two kids, so I had to make sure, okay, I have what I need uh, for my monthly, uh, you know, uh, expenditure. So if I don't do that, uh, Prabhakar, I'll be a bad steward. It may sound very nice. Hey, I gave all my salary. Uh, but then the Bible also teaches, Paul said, if you don't, if you can't look after your family, how can you look after the church, uh, which God has placed in our hands? So we must be very discerning, very, uh, we must learn, uh, you know, to rightly divide the word of God and to make sure that we, uh, you know, we should make, look after our family, also uh, give unto God. So I hope that answers your question, Prabhakar. Okay. Uh, Rupa, yes, go ahead. Uh, so thank you, sir. I just wanted to share uh, in line with uh, what uh, Brother Pra Prabhakar asked. Uh, I think many times God led us to sow the whole uh, month's salary into the gift as a gift, but we never told anyone that only mm. because the question has arised. I just Telling that, like first fruits, giving the first fruits to the Lord, first salary we gave to the Lord, but uh, we never worried about it. And God has uh, miraculously provided that month. That was glory to God alone. We ne we did not have any savings to fall back on. The salary was very little in those days in mission hospitals, but God gave led us to do it, and also He was faithful to provide for us. And I yeah. I think it when it is in direct uh, obedience to God's leading, Good. God will take care of that, sir. And yes. one more thing, I just wanted to add to our discussion about giving it to, unto the Lord. Uh, a small understanding God has given me because so many people are very upset that uh, church is not using what they are sowing into the kingdom properly. Most of the churches they are not transparent. Any few are very transparent so this is the thought uh, thought uh, holy spirit was uh, put into my heart jesus knew that judas iscariot was stealing from the purse but he was silent i don't know because i am not jesus i don't know why but uh, i think every penny we gave to the lord is counted for in his presence and sometimes we love the children and we also give them so many gifts, expensive gifts. We know that sometimes they are not in a position to use them properly because out of love, we want to lavish gifts on our children. So when we love the Lord, we are giving it on to the Lord. How they use, it is up to them. We can pray that that, that money would be used properly for the glory of the Lord. But we are giving it into onto the Lord, as you said, sir. Thank yes. you. I just wanted Thank to add you. these two things. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rupa, for sharing. Yes, uh, it's wonderful. Uh, right. Thank you so much for your thoughts. Uh, yeah, Christopher, go ahead, Christopher. Yeah, just, just something else too, I guess, just my thought on this is that uh, um, uh, I, I'm not sure, uh, and that's something maybe you can just validate, uh, Pastor, is I'm not sure whether, you know, uh, Jesus wanted, you know, to you know, to be very you know opulent, very um, you know, you know, very very big as far as you know, big very big buildings, and you know, make it very uh, you know very ornate and spend a lot of money. Uh, I think it's 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 also about you know the sim the you know the, the simplicity of you know um, the church and having you know um, uh, you know what the some of the fundamentals actually. Um, mm -hmm. Happening in the church, you know, which is about uh, you know having a, I know preaching the the you know, you know God's message, the, the healing healing ministry, 
you know, um, driving away the, you know, the, the evil one. Um, so again, I, I, I don't, I mean, I, I mean, you know, there is, I mean, in other denominations, um, and I do come from a, den a denominational church uh, earlier, uh, you know, you have these very, very um, big, um, you know, big churches, um, a lot of, um, a lot of money has been spent, a lot of money is, is, is used also for, you know, maintaining the churches. Mm -hmm. And um, I just find that, um, you know, um, uh, at the end of the day, I mean, you know, the, 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 the only reason the, the church is able to, you know, spend that money, I mean, spend that money is because of, you know, primarily because of the, the, on the offerings and the, and the tithing. So uh, some ways I, I, I just think that, you know, maybe some of that some of that um, you know what what Jesus actually wanted um, the churches to 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 to, to provide or what they had to you know stand for something that's uh, some way it is as it has some some way it has been lost out here. Yeah. yeah. Yeah very true uh Christopher thank you for sharing your thoughts. Yes in a time and age especially now like if you look at the early nineteen nineties I remember as a small kid going to church uh uh there's nothing you know you just probably had those uh projectors with those you know those sheets uh, i don't know what's that called but you put that in and then you, you can see the lyrics up and that was the most that you have and probably a guitar and a piano uh, but now uh, when we when we you know when we look at church and we look at um how it's grown and how how things have changed so much look at contemporary worship and uh, the way that uh, things are changing in the church sometimes it's very very easy to lose focus um uh, yeah oh thanks uh, uh, overhead projectors yes um it's very easy especially you know uh, you got these ambient lightings uh, now as a worship leader i'm just talking about right uh, you got ambient lightings you got lightings all over the you got a nice projection, you got a nice keyboard, you got good sound. Now, all this is very important as a church. Right? It's not that it's not important. Um, now, you know, sound systems and projections and, uh, you know, lightings, all this is important, especially if you're going live and you know the whole world is watching you. All this is important. But if all this becomes priority, we lose focus on what and we lose focus on what God wants us to do, then it all becomes, you know, a gimmick, a show. And we wouldn't want that, right? But there's also this responsibility of, you know, doing well, doing the best that we can, right? We use the resources. Um, I can't say, okay, you know, uh, LED lightings on stage is evil. Because of that, I'm not able to, uh, you know, uh, uh, worship the Lord. Uh, and it's all distracting. I can say that because we have come to a time, things have changed, right? Uh, and, and so we must be also able to uh, you know, make changes, but not diluting the word of God, not, not diluting the work of the spirit. So we must maintain that balance. And it's very difficult. I completely understand this because as a worship leader, I understand uh, there are times it's it just... Or, you know, just feel like going on into worship and you feel like doing things. Uh, uh, but we must make sure that it's not something of the flesh, but it's the spirit that is leading us to do it. And that's where we will see the fruit. Right. So yeah, thank you so much, Christopher. Uh, Maxon says, it is, so is it sound accountable and health when a pastor collect tithe from a church members and use it for his personal issues? Then he reports to the church committee that he collects tithe and uses it. Okay, Maxim, uh, the tithe that is given is given to the church. Now, as if the pastor is the senior pastor of the church and he is working, it will be good if he takes a salary uh, from the uh, complete, you know, uh, a monthly salary, like what his staff would be taking. Um, you know, probably if it's a church that is 300, 400 people, he would have staff, right? So... Uh, as a senior pastor, even though he's a founder, it'll be good if he takes a salary. So that way he is keeping himself safe. So, right. All right, let's go ahead and try to finish this chapter. The good questions. Uh, uh, all, second point, always tight from your individual income. Uh, and we just talked about all of that. Be generous. Uh, give to help others in need. Uh, 
Let's read Proverbs 11, 24 and 25. I'll just quickly read that. The world of the generous gets larger and larger. The world of the stingy gets smaller and smaller. The one who blesses others is abundantly blessed. Those who help others are helped. Right? So we work, we earn money, but money is not everything in life. Right? Money does not control us. We must control it. And we can do our best to give people be generous. The Lord himself said, it's more blessed to give than to receive. Right? Yeah. And so have this heart of giving. Know that when you give, God is going to multiply it. Right? It, it's not only for church. Okay, I, only if I give to church, God is multiplying. Yes, we give one-tenth to the church, but we can also be generous to others. Right? We can help the poor. We can help those who are destitute. We can help those, you know, uh, there are a lot of organizations which are working towards, um, you know, helping blind children. They've been born blind, right? And they help these children with education. So these are additional things we can do. And maybe nobody knows about it. Uh, but remember, God is watching you. And, the, and, and God will bless it uh, in small ways. It could be the smallest thing, but God will bless it. Right, uh, but here's the thing: when you give, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. Right? If I give to you know, the poor, the needy, and I, you know, just make a big announcement out of it, um, the whole value of it is gone. Right? Uh, it's it's more like a show, and that's why the Lord Jesus teaches us so many things. It's more blessed to give than to receive, but it's also don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. So, uh, do it in a silent way. Do it in a way that will please God. Uh, again, give to poor, give to widows, give to orphans. See what you can do. Uh, it could be a small amount. It's all right. Give. You know, maybe when you're on the street, uh, and if the Lord is leading you towards giving some poor people on the road, it could be food or it could be some money or some clothes. Uh, now go ahead, do it. You know, one of the things as Christians we are known for is to give, you know, we, we give to society with, uh, and, and missions, and we learned in missions, right? Uh, um, they built schools, they built orphanages. It was all, you know, why? Because God had put that in their hearts. It was all about giving to others, right? Um, and, and so it's very important when we give, God will bless us. Right. And then there's corporate tithing. Right? So, for example, owners of organizations and businesses, uh, they can, you know, uh, if you're a businessman and you know that, okay, uh, uh, you know, there's no set income every month, you can think about doing, you know, uh, one one ten percent of what you get as a net profit in your uh, in your organization you can think about giving that unto the lord as well or uh, and then you can also use it to help support the poor the orphaned and all of that uh, addressing poverty standing up against injustice and other causes um, there are many social evils around us right uh, child labor child trafficking, prostitution, uh, you know, uh, child trafficking, natural disasters, epidemics, all kinds of things. Uh, now, as believers, we can do our part. And we can do our part to uh, not only give, but to be available and to stand against all these things. You know, there are a lot of uh, our, our, some of our students who come to our church, young students, um, you know, they're part of these social causes. And it was so wonderful to listen to a couple of students where they were saying that uh, they go in and rescue people who are uh, children who are being trafficked, right? Uh, children who are 16, 15, up to even 13 years old who are trafficked into prostitution and all of that. They go uh, and there's this uh, young woman who's leading this whole, she's a believer. And uh, what she does is she, with the help of the police, um, she, you know, has a couple of contacts and God has given her this wonderful ministry where, uh, uh, you know, uh, and favor upon her. So the police also help her and, uh, you know, they, they go and they snatch out children who are being trafficked and literally from the hands of those who are trafficking them. Uh, so, um, and she's been she's been going all across our nation and the nations uh, talking about these social injustices. So if you uh, get an opportunity, 
Now go ahead, stand for it, talk about it, be good stewards of what the gospel of Jesus Christ is. And one of the things we do is we go to a lot of colleges um, and we have these, um, or, you know, sometimes it's a two hour session uh, or life skills. And sometimes it is uh, on a regular weekly basis. We go to a couple of colleges and, and we talk about these social evils and we talk about how God has, uh, you know, called us to stand against it. Right. And how we can in small ways make a difference. Right? Uh, one of the main topics we talk about is these uh, suicidal tendencies, right? Uh, uh, drug addiction how drug abuse uh, among the youth. And so these are all social injustices and uh, these are things that we can address. And as believers, we can you know, stand and support these things, right? And finally, the last point, we're all responsible for our creation care. Uh, Psalms 115, 16 says, the heavens, the heavens are the Lord, but the earth he has given to the children of men. Uh, so the earth, has, God has entrusted us uh, with the earth. So we must be, we must manage it well. Remember what God told Adam? I put you in the garden. Now you tend it. You cultivate the garden. You guard it. Uh, so we must also, you know, in, in whatever ways possible, learn to, you know, keep our cities uh, clean, take care of it as much as we can. You know, uh, we may think, okay, I'm just a minority here, but you, you, you can make a difference, right? Uh, a small difference at least, um, and 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 that is being a good steward uh, uh, to God, being a good steward to what God has entrusted us with. So, uh, so yes, we'll bring this chapters come to a close. Uh, uh, so, just want to encourage us that in everything that we have in our life. Um, we must be good stewards. Remember that everything is from God. Every season, every challenge we can overcome. What, what God has blessed us with, let us learn to be good stewards and let us also learn to be a blessing to the church, to the ministries, to poor people, to the people around us. And um, stewardship, uh, good stewards is what God is looking at for us. So... Uh, right, so let's bring this uh, session to a close. Uh, yes, could one of us please close in prayer? Uh, any one of us? Rupa. Father, we thank you for today. We bless you because you are good. There is none like you. You are the giver of life. You are the giver of all good things. We thank you for life in abundance. We thank you for favors. We thank you for the beautiful things you have enabled us to enjoy, even as we are alive. Thank you because you are going to use us for your glory. You are going to use us to do great and mighty things which we would not expect. Lord, thank you because you are resting the weight of your glory upon each and every one of us. Thank you for the word we have received to this morning lord we ask that you shall help us to put it into good use you shall help us to implement everything that we have had none shall go nor and void in the name of jesus thank you because you're protecting our families thank you because you're strengthening us to continue to run the ready to continue to run this race of life that we shall not get weary thank you because we are casting our bodies onto you because we know you truly cares thank you because our hearts are open for you to continue to do great and mighty things to walk through us to help us oh lord thank you because we are sanctified we are purified and we are sustained only in you thank you because you are helping us even in our infirmities that we shall not go wrong thank you because you are guiding our decisions thank you because you are the driver of our life shall not allow us to go the wrong path shall not all allow us to go the wrong places you shall not allow us to meet the wrong people thank you because our destinies are preserved in you thank you because at the end even at the end we shall not be found wanting for in jesus most precious name we have prayed amen amen amen, amen. thank you blessing thank you everyone amen. for joining us uh, have a wonderful week ahead we'll catch up next week god bless Bless you. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, sir. Bless. Yes, thank you. God bless.